Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> I just tried that out because that's how one of my friends does her intros. Tiffany. Tiffany, I hope you're watching this. It's so good to be back with another vlog. And I decided to talk in this vlog. I didn't just want it to be me showing you videos and you probably don't understand what is going on and you get bored. So you know I'm also apart from being a YouTuber, I'm actually a professional makeup artist. I do makeup for clients, you know, brides music video shoots photo shoots like any kind of makeup basically so you know it was a fun experience it was the wedding of the century which was in june june 2nd was it happened in anambra state agulu to be precise i'm from anambra state so it was like homecoming for me but i went to someone else's village you know and well it was a fun experience because i got to make up you know one very gorgeous fabulous woman melanin popping and her name is chidiogo akunyili if you're Nigerian, Akunyili, that name rings a bell to you, you know, because her mom, Mrs. the late Mrs. Dora Akunyili, God rest her soul, she was the director general of NAFDAC, NAFDAC meaning the National Agency for Food and Drugs Administration and Control. She was an icon basically, and um, she was also the uh, ministry, minister for information and communication before her death in 2014. I actually got called to do her makeup by her cousin the lovely Mwadito, Mwadito, God bless you because everything like it happened for me because of you you let God use you and I totally appreciate that so Mwadito was her cousin but also the event planner for the event and she chatted me up on WhatsApp that I have a bridal job for you and you know okay it's an anam blah 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 how much will you charge we had all that talk and when we are finished talking she said okay let me just be truthful it's actually Dora Akunyuli's daughter I'm like I'm sorry sorry Dora Akunyuli's daughter I'm like oh my god it's a big deal because i mean i'm like oh my god so i'm about to blow i called my sister i called her i'm like okay something is about to happen i'm going to be doing dora Kunyeli's daughter's makeup and i knew it was going to be a big deal because anybody who's anybody is going to be there you know everybody like every vlog every blog every tv station everybody's going to want like an exclusive it was going to go viral i knew and i felt this was going to do a lot for my business so I was pretty excited yes then she told me like okay the makeup the bride is very specific about the kind of makeup she wants she's um, a naturalista you know she likes minimal makeup she's a makeup minimalist she's not gonna she doesn't want foundation she doesn't want you know basically she doesn't want foundation I'm like, what kind of bride doesn't want foundation? I was like, okay, I'm like, uh -huh, don't worry sister, she's going to change her mind, like, every bride wants foundation, every bride wants to be the best looking woman on her wedding day, yeah, so, well, I actually traveled down the east, two days to the wedding with Mwadito and her sweet mom, <laughs> I stayed at Mwadito's family house over there in the village, a day to the wedding, we went to the bride's house, Mwadito made all her dresses for her and for her bridal party you know her girls her ashwibi girls and everything why did not handle all that like she's so efficient so went to have them try out their clothes you know the mother-in-law chidogo was actually getting married to a canadian so it was an interracial marriage which I, I was like all the more excited about um we got there she tried out the clothes i got a feel of the bride she has a sophistication about her she knows what she wants she was cool you know okay so she's like oh you're gonna be doing my makeup oh make sure you make me pretty okay i'm like don't worry you have no worries <laughs> Our wedding was like a three-day event because they did the pre-wedding thing the day before the wedding where the masquerades came and everybody was entertained then the wedding day and then the day after that which was thanksgiving of which that was the day i left which was a sunday the day to the wedding they had like a, a kind of like get together and you know a lot of masquerades came around it was a very beautiful colorful cultural display like nigerian culture Igbo culture african culture is so beautiful like the masquerades were dancing and the white people got into it you know it was a nice display of culture we had dances we had different masquerades we have different kinds of music <laughs> Thank you. 
the amount of food that we're passing that day, you would think that was even the wedding day. That was not the wedding day. I was man, I ate like two rounds of food. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> like in my mind, I was like, ah, ah, for us regular folks, this is already the wedding. Like food, entertainment, everybody's having fun. <laughs> Rainmakers in um I know basically I don't know about other traditions but in evil culture whenever you're doing any wedding or any event basically in the village you have to get rainmakers to actually stop rain from falling on the day of your events. So it rained that day to the wedding, but the day of the wedding it was dry. It was dry, like not a single drop of rain. Then the day after the wedding it rained. So those rainmakers definitely did their job, it was awesome. <laughs> so the next morning um we went over to her place and i set up waiting for the bride she had a bag she came to me and then it was time for makeup before then what did had already sent me a picture on whatsapp of what the bride wanted of the kind of look the bride wanted and we didn't have time to meet before the uh, prior to the wedding to do a trial session because trial sessions always get you like it makes everything easy for you because then you have a feel of what the person wants and you decide on the exact look so that that day you don't go back and forth and waste time you know the day of the wedding but we didn't have the opportunity to meet because I was in a different part of Nigeria I was in Lagos and apparently I think she was in Abuja also so we couldn't meet so that day of her wedding was the first day I was actually laying my fingers on her face you know for the first time so the picture when Dita sent me was a bride that, yeah, the makeup wasn't heavy, you know, normally for a white wedding makeup, I don't do heavy makeup for, you know, a white wedding. The makeup wasn't heavy, but I could tell, I mean, check out the picture here that I will show, this is what it looked like. And she seemed to have everything, you know, the, brides, the brows were done, she had eyeshadow, her skin was glowing, obviously there was foundation, highlights and contour, like layers of makeup, and there was some glow, like sickening glow on her face, you know. So I was like, oh, okay, the bride wants natural, if this is what she wants, I can definitely do that, you know. So I felt the bride was, <laughs> I actually expected the bride to have, to allow me to do more makeup than I eventually was able to do on her face, you know, she actually was very, 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 very exact about what she wanted and she wasn't compromising on it, like, no way, you know, her friends were around, I got to meet one of her friends, like, I got to meet all her friends basically, but there was one that was like, when she saw me, she was like, oh, you look Rwandi, because she was Rwandan, or she is Rwandan, and it was he gets, I think it was her chief bridesmaid, so she was like, oh, you look Rwandi, you look like one of us, you know, you could pass my sister, I'm like, oh my god, really? <laughs> so it was fun, we actually clicked and all that, we took pictures together, when I started the makeup, I was like, okay, brows, she wants brows that are pretty much natural, she didn't want her brows carved, you know, I, I couldn't groom her brows, nothing. Okay, so I was just filling in the brows and before I was done with the brows, everybody was like, oh my God, Chido was not going to like this. Like her friends were coming around, her sister, they were looking at what I was doing. It was not very comfortable for me, but I mean, I'm a makeup artist. I'm, I work in basically any condition. <laughs> That's what I do for a living. So, you know, I was just okay. So they basically did not like the brows and the bride picked up a mirror and looked at it and she was like, no, this is not what I want, this is not what I want, I'm like, okay, so what are we going to do? Thank God I hadn't gone far. <laughs> so I had to take off the brows, like I had to clean up the brows, basically remove the pencil that was in her brows, like any product on her natural brow, and I ended up doing her brows without any product in them, just the natural hair. I just I just ended up cleaning up the brows with some foundation not even concealer because I wanted it to be as natural as possible because the bride wasn't having any of it you know you know why Nigerians we like to go all out you understand she's like I don't want this Nigerian makeup I don't want to I want to be as natural as possible even after cleaning it up like her sister will come back to check you know and she's like mm gee how is it I'm sorry <laughs> Chidi if I watch this don't take offense okay I just <laughs> It was fun for me, like in my heart, I was laughing. <laughs> I knew I was gonna laugh over the whole experience eventually. It wasn't bad. So, yeah, she was like, Inji, how is it? Inji was like, 
there's still product in it. There's still product in it. I'm like, oh my god, what else do they want me to do? You know, I kept cleaning. I'm like, mm, there's no more product in here. Okay, this is your natural hair. They are black. <laughs> it is black naturally. Mm. So I think there, there was some point like every bride knows the term bridezilla. So I think there's some point when you know, cause you're so you're flooded with emotions. You want everything to be perfect. You're tense. So sometimes you tend to like just act based on those emotions and. At some point, some brides actually do like catch them, so I'm like, oh my god, I hope I'm not being a bridezilla. So I think that was there was a moment where Chidiogo had that whole, oh, I hope I'm not being a bridezilla. And she like she put her shoulder, her hands on my shoulder, and I'm like, ne, dalu o, maybe dalu o, thank you very much. That's like thank you in Igbo, and I knew that she was just being really sweet, and that was very nice of her. I actually appreciated that because I know how tense she must have been, especially being that she probably was thinking at the end of the day she was not going to like her makeup, and her perfect day would have been. Ruined, but she still trusted me despite it all that was like really sweet of her and she the girl you were not a bridezilla I was like cleaning the brows with foundation everybody was good and happy her sister was like it's going to photograph well because you know even if there's a little product in it it's going to photograph her oh thank you Jesus so we moved over to the eyes she let me do some neutral shimmer shadow on her then she requested for green highlight in the inner corner of her eye so I used green eyeshadow to just do that from my Juvia's palette and she actually told me that she didn't want she didn't want foundation. I actually primed her face. And you know how when you prime your face, there's this almost grayish mask it leaves. I'm like, how on earth am I going to cover that if I'm not going to use foundation? Like, it has to be fast on your feet. And she didn't want me to use my brushes on her face. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, mm, how are we going to do this? Like, face makeup was a miracle because she actually had her concealer, which was her perfect shade. I just used her concealer to, like, conceal you know the imperfections and blemishes on her face and I used my finger thank you Jesus for my fingers you know just patted it in and blended it out with the rest of her face blended out the concealer that I had used to do her brows and her skin was looking good and I was like oh god like <sighs> the host of heaven must really be on my side today everything went perfectly I used her powder puff to apply powder on her face and she wanted a very light coat of powder she kept insisting that she wanted her natural skin to show and I'm thanking God that you eventually did and then her lips she let me do any color of my choice I did like a uh, burgundy then I later put a layer of nude on it so it ended up looking sort of pinky wine like that kind of look you guys can see it so then she had to wear her dress I had to help her with her hair because she had a natural hair done and so I had to help her with her bird cage you know she was looking really beautiful her, her brother came in and she was like, how do I look? How do I look? And the brother was like, you look gorgeous. The photographer, everybody like, oh, in and I am. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Do you know that after everything, she went to the mirror. Like, she stood up from my chair, went to the mirror, looked at it. I was like, oh, my God. I don't think Andrew is going to like this. Oh, my God. I don't think Andrew is going to like this. Andrew is the name of her husband and I was like, Jesus, sweet Jesus, come to my rescue. Andrew is going to love it, but of course it was not my place to say. Every other person was like, girl, are you serious? You look gorgeous. What do you mean? Like, you look good. You're like, are you sure? Are you sure? She just needed reassurance and everybody reassured her and I was like, thank you, Jesus. She looks good and she eventually was happy with her look. Thank you. She got into her wedding dress. She was off to church. I was like, thank you, Jesus. You know, it was a fun experience. It was the wedding of the century. Anyways, the bride just the bride and groom wanted their wedding to be really African. She had Ankara in her wedding gown. The husband didn't wear a tuxedo. He wore like, a native attire. That's what he wore. Like look, looking really, really good. They look like chocolate and cream together, and they're so in love. Like if you, you need to say the way they look at each other. Oh, I want to get married already. Actually, it was time for her traditional wedding. So what we did, we just switched up the lip color to red because she had this red attire. She was looking really, really regal. She looked like royalty. She looked beautiful. Like she's melanin goals. Like oh. Okay. So do maybe yes. But choose the form. Okay. Let
anyways after that it was time for her third outfit her final outfit for the day i changed her lipstick to nude and then i put some gold glitters on her eyes you know just to make it sparkle and she had this gilet that was heavenly oh my god like that ashoke was to die for it was really full like my hands are pretty small but you know i had prayed that morning that my hands were not going to disappoint me so i did the gilet like all that mm, this gilet you must obey me today like all the layers all the steps everything was mm, mm, mm. i'm like yeah so pretty she is stunning. Oh, this is like right that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Woohoo! Oh my god. Close your eyes, please. So beautiful. Oh my god, just. Oh, I don't think you've seen yourself, have you? You haven't. It was so beautiful, and it was actually a gift, as I got to find out from the first lady of Anambra State, who happens to be like a mom to her. You know, she was calling her. She was trying to find out what was going on because she couldn't make it though so she was i feel was like really nice like she ended up looking so good like you guys ah! <laughs> I missed the whole wedding. I, I heard that everybody who was anybody was there. And I was basically obsessed throughout. I also missed the special dance. The bride and the groom, I learned it before the wedding that they had like to they had to learn some choreography to a specific song. One um Onyoma by Fino featuring Olamidi and they danced it together. Like that's the cutest thing ever. I'm still doing that on my wedding day. Bay, I hope you're ready. The wedding wasn't even over and people were already calling me like they were already seeing posts on Bella and Aija on all the biggest fashion and lifestyle blogs in Nigeria and you know Instagram the tags were coming in blah 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 my sister would tag me yeah my sister was the makeup artist you know like she was so proud we are Zuri blah 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 and my hair like ooh, I have blow <laughs> so it was it was awesome like oh oh my god I was actually scared, let me not lie to you, because I felt the makeup we did was not bridal makeup, in my own judgment, in my own Nigerian makeup artist judgment. That was actually what I felt at first. But at the end of the day, it's about your, your client satisfaction. I think she got what, what she wanted and that was what mattered. It probably what wouldn't have been the, the look I would have given her, but man. I was expecting some Nigerians to chew me up because that was not the regular bridal makeup they were going for. And if you know Nigerians, Nigerians are merciless when you go to the comment section of blogs or whatever, you know, when they watch stuff and they were like, hmm, I didn't see one bad comment. I was like, that was a mirror. You know, all the years of being a makeup artist in Nigeria, tagging them to repost your videos, tagging Bella and Nigeria, wedding, blah, 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 and they don't ever repost, but that was a picture that went viral and I'm glad that nobody saw anything bad to say about the makeup because I was like oh thank you Jesus I was getting a lot of profile visits I was getting a lot of um like followers on my Instagram and everything because I, I was tagged on every single picture I, I was given credit and you know I was given makeup credits it was really amazing to me and at the end of the day Chide girls like thank you you made me look good her friends are sliding into my DM like you did an amazing job we'll totally recommend you I took pictures you know felt like part of the family I basically missed out on the whole phone I didn't attend the wedding because I was upset throughout you know getting ready for the next makeup and costume change and talk shops you understand so eventually when I did my makeup and everything the wedding was over but anyways no problem I went I ate and basically it was fun for me it was a fun experience Wadi was a sweetheart because she was there through it all you know she was a crisis manager <laughs> she was a superb wedding planner and basically it happened because of her so I'm totally grateful people were calling me I felt like it was my wedding my friends were like oh my friend you are blue you're not popular we are seeing you everywhere I'm like oh thank you thank you <laughs> so I'm like I couldn't even plan to vlog about this but I just felt okay it'd be nice for me to just tell you guys how we went the experience it was awesome you know and and well yeah I forgot to mention I also did the gilly for the bride's mother-in-law the Uyibu. she liked the gilly yeah thank you Jesus oh that's some question like her ears were hurting of course which is understandable I wish you guys a happy marriage heaven on earth in your marriage and it was fun being your makeup artist call me anytime and I'll be there for you now I know the kind of makeup you like yeah 
So those of you who want to have your makeup done by me, feel free, okay? I'm very available for bookings and I travel too. So yeah, I'll leave my email. You could just email me. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm serious. I'm not kidding actually. I'm very serious. I'm a businesswoman. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video.